Hey guys, what is up and welcome to my channel, it's a hardback life. My name is Jordan, and today we're going to be talking about my May wrap-up, as well as a few other things. But before we get into that, I just wanted to share with those of you um, some celebrations that have been happening, whether it's throughout the world or something that happened to me personally. Uh... Well, two months ago, I got promoted at work, and it's just been interesting adjusting to my new position, because I have more responsibility, and I also have people I oversee, so, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, that's, that's different, because I'm not usually the one who likes to take charge, but I've been having to do that. Also, um, I wanted to say Happy Father's Day because today is Father's Day. So to any of you fathers out there, I hope your day was wonderful and you got to spend it with your family and doing whatever you want to do, like watching golf. And uh, also, uh, my brother, speaking of Father's Day, my brother just had a baby. He and his wife had a baby 10 days ago, in fact. So he's a brand new dad. He's a little girl named Juliet. She's the most beautiful human being on the planet. I'm being biased because I'm her uncle. But yeah, um, I cannot wait to see what life brings my niece. And I'm going to be there for her every step of the way or as much as I can um so it's just emotionally yeah so like I'm sorry this this last couple months have been emotionally charged for me because my new job my niece has been born and then also just thinking about this month being pride month because if you didn't know I identify as gay and then also, I mean, I'm, you can obviously tell, I'm African American, so Juneteenth holds a special place in my heart, because without Juneteenth happening, I don't think I would be able to be in front of you guys today doing this. Uh, so, yeah, I'm grateful for that, too. And... Anyway, you guys, before I get all sappy and start crying or whatever, um, let's get into my May wrap-up. May, I read only three books. I know, only three books. But that was because I was dealing with a lot with work. Like I said, I got promoted, so it's been kind of crazy. And whenever I tend to work a lot, I just want to come home and just chill and relax. But, uh, yeah, but luckily I now work nine to five. So <laughs> every day that I work. So it's a blessing for that. So that I can come home and literally open up a book if I want to. The first book I read in May was When No One Is Watching by Alyssa Cole. This was my favorite book that I read in May and one of my favorite books of the year so far. Uh, let me read you a little bit of the synopsis. Sydney Green is Brooklyn born and raised, but her beloved neighborhood seems to change every time she blinks. Condos are sprouting up like weeds, for sale signs are popping up overnight, and the neighbors she's known all her life are disappearing. To hold on to her community's past and present, Sydney channels her frustrations into a walking tour and finds an unlikely and unwanted assistant in one of the new arrivals to the block, her neighbor Theo. But Sydney and Theo's deep dive into history quickly becomes a dizzying descent into paranoia and fear. That's all I'm going to read to you because this, this synopsis is long. But yeah, basically, in this book, it's basically about gentrification. It's a psychological thriller 
about gentrification and the dangers of it. So like I said in the synopsis, um, Sydney is an African American and she lives in a predominantly black neighborhood in Brooklyn, New York. And her neighbors are disappearing at an alarming rate. And also the shops that she's grown up with and known are also disappearing. And there's a lot that comes into play in this book. A lot of the villain type people are, let's just say, doing some very bad things. Uh, I don't want to spoil it at all. I want you guys to read it. I definitely 100% recommend this book because Alyssa Cole does a fantastic job. She's definitely a good writer and definitely, like I said, I recommend this book 100%. second book I read is a graphic novel called The Girl from the Sea by Molly Knox Ostertag. This is about uh, a girl named Morgan who is living on an island. Uh, she and her family moved to this island several years ago, but in the midst of them being there, her parents get divorced. And because her parents get divorced, obviously one of them moves away, her dad moves away, and that causes her family to kind of go out good in shambles. And her little brother is becoming, I don't know, just very rude and distant towards her. And she also is dealing with the fact that she likes girls. So she's a 15-year-old who's not only dealing with the aftermath of her parents' divorce and her troubled brother, but the fact that she likes girls and she's hiding that from her family and best friends. And this story is so adorable. At the same time, um, somewhat tragic. But it's so good. I absolutely love this graphic novel. I don't want to say too much. There is a supernatural element to it. Um, yeah, so definitely pick up this graphic novel, The Girl from the Sea. Fantastic. I really enjoyed it. Next book that I read in May, and the final book I read in May, is Crave by Tracy Wolf. I finally read this, you guys. This is one book series that I have been trying to read since it came out in, like, 2020. And... I've been wanting to pick it up, but I just haven't felt the desire to. I Well, it's not that I haven't felt the desire to. It's just there's been other books that have been taking up my um, concentration. And I finally decided to you know, be like, you know what? I'm going to read this. Because I've been buying this series um, one by one, book after book. And I have the first four books that are out. It's going to be a six-book series. But anyway, this book is about a girl named Grace who moves to Alaska to be with her uncle and cousin because they are her only remaining family as her parents have unfortunately died. And so things are changing for her because she moved from California to Alaska. So a major wake-up call when it comes to the weather. And also, when she goes to the school, everybody is different. For one, they dislike her with a passion. And she doesn't know why. And also, a bunch of mysterious things are happening. Whether it's with um, events happening at the school or, like, with the people that she goes to school with. So, yeah, there's crazy elements. This book, I thought, was really good. It was kind of slow, 
at the beginning because there was a lot of role building. But once it kicks in, it kicks into high gear and it does not stop. Anyway, you guys, that was my May wrap up. And I'm also going to share with you guys real quick the four books that I have read so far this month. Okay, I'm going to go over these briefly because I'm not going to go into a full-blown uh, thing about them. My recent reads video that I'm going to be doing this week, so you'll hear more about these books and maybe a, another book or two before the... Yeah, before the end of the week. Okay, so I just want to also share first that some of these books were part of a readathon because this month Shell Space Discord is having a Magical Creatures readathon where there's nine prompts and I have to follow those nine prompts. And I'll share those with you as I'm pulling out each book, at least the ones that I read for the readathon so far. Okay, so the first book that I read in the this month so far is We Were Kings. This is about a girl named Nyla King who discovers that she's been lied to by her mom about her true identity. And there's also another woman that she's connected to. I'm not going to tell you what way because uh, it... I want you to find that out for yourself. Uh, a woman that she's connected to, at least her mom's connected to, named Frankie Quick, who is convicted of killing her best friend, her mother's, her mother's sister, and 20 years ago. And there's this thing called the Accelerated Death Penalty Act. And Nyla decides to take it upon herself to go to the prison and visit Frankie and try to figure out whether she is innocent or not. And she ultimately decides that Frankie is innocent, and so she decides to help Frankie prove her innocence. But she's on a time crunch, because like I said, the accelerated death penalty uh, means that she only has 30 days to prove whether Frankie is innocent or not. And so she's got a move faster than she ever realized. Um, that's all I'm going to say about that. More about it later on my recent reads video that's coming soon. The second book I read so far in June is Not a Happy Family by Sherry Lapina. Oh, by the way, We Were Kings was by Court Stevens. Um, Sherry Lapina, Not a Happy Family is this one. And it's about... A family, uh, the Martins, who are a rich family. Uh, the book starts off basically the kids, Catherine, Dan, and Jenna, are meeting their parents at their home and they're having Easter dinner because they mainly they gather for the holidays a lot. And after everybody leaves, the parents are found dead within the next day or two. And the main suspects are the kids. So it's basically a who done it kind of thing. But at the same time it's like um a thriller because every character in the book is paranoid about who could have done it or when also bad things happen. It's a fantastic book. I gave it a 4.2 out of 5 stars. And I'll get into that um, in my recent reads video. But yeah, this book is definitely great. The author, Cheryl Lapina, can write, man. This girl is a beast. I definitely am going to pick up more books by this author. And you guys definitely should read it. This book I read, and it's my favorite book of the year now, so far, that is Good Girl, Bad Blood by Holly Jackson, the second book in the A Good Girl's Guide to Murder trilogy. And holy crap, man, this book 
was ridiculous. And I'm saying that because the author um, even says in an interview that she's uh, very obsessed with crime and just learning about it. And our main character basically takes on the role of a detective. If you didn't read the first book, oh, please go read the first book. It's called A Good Girl's Guide to Murder. But the first book basically is set up... Um, our main character, Pippa Fitzamobi, is uh, having to do a class project, which is called the um, Capstone Project. And she decides to take on the um, project of figuring out who really killed Andy Bell. And it's a five-year-old case. Andy Bell was a student at uh, Fairview High School, I think, is where Aunt, uh, Pippa goes. And the person who's accused of killing her is her boyfriend, Sal. Now, Sal kills himself not too long after Andy is presumed dead. And so that's basically the first, um, first book. It's not a spoiler. It's the, the synopsis, basically. Pippa basically goes through the whole book trying to figure out if he's innocent or not. And, oh man, the first book was so dang good. The second book starts off a little slow, but when it gets going, it gets going really quickly, and it just doesn't stop. There's reveal after reveal, twist after twist, and there are things that I just didn't see coming. I absolutely freaking loved this book. And I cannot wait to finish reading the series. The third book is called As Good As Dead. And I'm going to wait to read it for like another week or so because the paperback comes out. And my friend Trinity, um, whose channel Purple Magic is on booktube here as well. You should go follow her. She's fantastic. Uh, she wants to, I think she wants to buddy read it with me. So I am looking forward to that. And I can wait because this book gave, made me feel all sorts of emotions. It made me cry multiple times. It made me laugh because there are some hilarious moments. And it made me just like, just be in shock like 99% of the time. Anyway, um, this is Good Girl, Bad Blood. I definitely recommend the series, again, by Holly Jackson. Okay, and the last book that I'm going to talk about for my uh, recent, or uh, for the books I've read so far in June, is... Oh, I almost dropped it. Holy crap. Girl on Fire by Alicia Keys. And this was co-written by Andrew Weiner and illustrated by Brittany Williams. Uh, this is about a girl who finds out that she has powers. And this is set in a predominantly black neighborhood. Um, that's all I'm going to say because it's a graphic novel and obviously I want to share more with you when I do my recent reads video. And also, yeah, like I said, it's by Alicia Keys, famous singer, who is now a famous author. This graphic novel was so good. I finished it today. I started it yesterday. Um, yeah, oh my god, I loved it. So, Girl on Fire, definitely go get it. Okay, those are the books that I read so far in the month of June. And, oh, by the way, um, three of those books were part of the readathon that I'm doing right now. Uh, Not a Happy Family was for, uh, I can't remember what, what magical creature it was for, but, uh, the prompt was read a standalone novel. And then the second one, uh, Good Girl, Bad Blood was read a book that's set in a trilogy, or read a book that's part of a trilogy. 
And then the other one was read a book with fire on the cover or in the title. And that was my third change. I chose Girl on Fire because it's shorter to read and more doable for me. So, yeah. I'm currently in between two books for other prompts. And A Little Hope is the next book I'm reading uh, by Ethan Joella. This is for a um, read a book that's under 300 pages or under. No, it's a read a book that's under 300 pages. Yeah. And then I'm reading Shadow of the Gods, which for the prompt, read a book with multiple POVs. And this is a reread. Well, a redo reread because I didn't finish it the first time. Only because I was kind of confused. And yeah, but I plan on finishing it this time as well as A Little Hope. So hopefully I will have at least this book done by my for my recent reads video. If I have Shadow of the Gods done, that would be awesome too. <laughs> and lastly, guys, I'm going to share with you my books that I'm going to read for Pride Month. And I might read more. I just chose a selection of four books that fit uh, the LGBTQ plus representation. First book I want to talk about is called Sky Falling. Sky Falling is about a girl named Sky who decided to donate some of her eggs several years ago. But Sky is the kind of person who doesn't have um, much responsibility except for her job. And she doesn't take make a point to get close to people um, on account of many reasons. Such as her, like, uh, she has a lot of social issues, I guess, or whatever. But in this story, um, she decides to go back to her hometown. And in her hometown, she is tracked down by this 12-year-old girl who claims that she's her daughter. And things get even more complicated when the the... the girl that she's tracked down by, her aunt is the girl that Skye had an awkward encounter with. Basically, Skye tried to flirt and pick up her aunt, and it didn't go so well. So she has to deal with that fallout. But at the same time, she's going to be developing a relationship with her newfound daughter, and hopefully another relationship with other people. Anyway, um, this is Sky Falling. I cannot wait to read it. It is a book of the month copy. Uh, it came out June of last year. So basically a Pride um, month last year. And I didn't read it. So now I am. Okay, all three of these books for Pride Month are all by Becky Albertalli. One of them I've already read, but I'm rereading it because it is now a duology. Okay, the first book, like I said, I've already read it, is What If It's Us by Becky Albertalli and Adam Silvera. Uh, this is about two boys named Ben and Arthur who have a meet-cute moment at a post office. And after that meet-cute moment, they spend a good chunk of the book trying to find each other. And then they develop a friendship, which turns into something more. And, yeah, there's a lot of pop culture references in this book. I adored it when I read it um, in 2020. Or was it 2020? No, it was 2020. Sorry. And I can't... I started rereading it earlier this year, but uh, I'm choosing to reread it now 
Like start it over and reread it. And then the second one came out December of last year. And this one is a special addition to me because, ladies and gentlemen, if you can see, it is signed by both authors. So this is a signed copy by both Becky Albertalli and Adam Sil Silvera. This is Here's to Us. And this is, this book takes place, I think, after they've graduated high school and stuff like that. And they've broken up and so they both have different lives, but they come together again somehow. And they're friends because obviously they both are dating someone, I believe. And... Who knows what could happen? Anyway, this is Here's to Us. And I can't wait to read it because the way What If It's Us ended, I was just like, no. <laughs> and then when I found out it was, there was going to be a sequel, I was just like, okay. Um, I'm down. Okay, and the last book that I'm going to read for Pride Month that I know of is Kate in Waiting by... Becky Albertalli again. Uh, this is about two friends, Kate and I forget her friend's name, but Kate is straight and her best friend, I think his name is Arthur, I could be wrong, is gay. And they both fall for this new guy that they m meet in high school. And he's in their drama uh club and they're trying not to let this guy come between them but that may be the case where he does come between them and things get weirder from there that's all i know this book came out i think in 2021 yeah it was 2021 i haven't read it yet i'm going to Anyway, you guys, that was the video for you. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. That would mean a lot to me. And, um, yeah, get you updated on more videos to come. And be looking for my recent reads video that's going to be coming this week. Also, my mid-year book freakout tag that she'll be here this week as well. You guys, I hope your day is going to be filled with joy and awesomeness. I'll see you later. Bye.